Hey everybody, <clears throat> uh, it's Laura. It's time uh, today. We're going to do a conversations of support, a uh, little chat. Um, I'm going to do this off the cuff. Uh, I don't know exactly what I want to say or how I'm going to say it, but we're going to chat just a little bit. Uh, today's topic is about um, uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and it is uh, today, September 7th, is known as World uh, Duchenne Awareness Day. <clears throat> and you may wonder, be wondering why that's important to me and why it should be important to you. Well, it's important to me because my, our son, AJ, uh, who is 25, has Duchenne muscular dystrophy and lives with that every day of his life. And um, we live with it every day of our lives. Um, there's going to be good days and bad days throughout this. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the uh, scientific special, you know, information about Duchenne. I'll post that separately uh, on my page if you want to take time to look at that kind of information as far as like how many one in whatever number of boys end up with Duchenne. But Duchenne is a genetic um, disease that is on the X chromosome. And us females are two X's and a male is an X and a Y. Um, sometimes if the mom is a carrier, um, and has one bad ex, that bad ex could go to their son and, um, uh, then they would show the actual signs of the disease, the, um, which is a muscle pro progressive muscle weakening disease. Um, or in our case, um, it happened as a spontaneous mutation. Uh, when he was conceived, just luck of the draw, and uh, we're um, awesome to have him um, with us. Uh, hey, Kitty, how are you? Um, we're just chatting about AJ today, <clears throat> and uh, um, uh, um, we found out he had Duchenne muscular dystrophy when he was about six and a half years old. He was in kindergarten, and as many of us have kids starting school again uh, for this new school year, there may be some other student out there that um, finds out that when the gym teacher says, run around the black line in the gym, and your child is the one that can't keep up, and it's not because they're goofing off, but it's because they're trying to do their best, that maybe there might be something to look at there medically. So um, that's what happened to us. So we are grateful for our his phys ed teacher and his school nurse back then, um, who kind of pushed the envelope a little bit uh, for us uh, in getting a diagnosis. Um, but what I want to explain is that it's a progressive muscle weakening. So when I say that he was diagnosed at age six, you know, he was able to walk unassisted until about mm, age 10 or so. And then he started needing, getting super tired, you know, to do long distances. So he started with a manual wheelchair. Then after that, um, I think he was in fifth grade when he got his first power wheelchair and he became independent. That power chair was a sign for him that he could keep up with his classmates. You know, for us as parents, it's hard to see our kids have to need and use special equipment just to survive, just to um, do anything um, in life, go to school, um, be at home, whatever it is. But the fact that he was happy that he could move himself, that overshadowed my uh, sadness that we were starting a new phase, you know. Just like when he um, uh, was in school then and had to have assistance to go to the bathroom and use a, a hand urinal and all of that kind of stuff. Um, we have built and we uh, are still uh, very uh, good friends with many of our school nurse friends um, that helped him throughout all his ages uh, when he was in school. Um, so they're a very important part of our journey, um, knowing... Um, how to help a student with Duchenne muscular dystrophy um, still um, uh, be successful and feel connected and be a part of a school environment. Um, 
when I say muscle weakening and progressive, what does that mean to you? Um, for us, it meant that um, he had he lost the ability to walk first, but um, that lasted. That was the only thing that he lost for quite a long time. About uh, right before the pandemic hit, he was having some gallbladder issues and had to spend nine days in the hospital. No surgery, but nine days in the hospital, and he lost a lot of upper body strength then. After that is when he really started losing the ability to feed himself, which he can no longer do. Um, so my husband, who we all know, if you're fr if you're a part of our family, know our family, we all know I'm not the best cook in the world, right? So hubby, Jim, dad, is the one who does the cooking, and he then um, uh, sits and feeds uh, most of the meals to AJ. Um, I think it's a guy thing. The guys like to hang out together. Um, so, uh, but in a couple of weeks, y'all can be um, keeping us in prayer because uh, I'll be in charge of the feeding and the and making of the food. <laughs> so AJ will probably uh, complain about that uh, because hubby has a work conference that he has to do soon. And uh, so, um, you know, that's a big change when you can't feed yourself and you rely on your your parents to do everything for you to help you to go to the bathroom to take a shower to eat um, um, to scratch your head he hasn't been able to give us a hug in oh gosh I don't know how many years I, I've probably forgotten what it feels like um, I can still hug him of course but uh, it's it's a it's a challenge, and not many people truly understand what it is our family uh, deals with, and the fact that we did it for so many years while both of us worked. Um, now both of us are retired, and he is our full time job. And um, hey, Miss Dawn, how are you? Um, I'm just sharing information today about a little bit, a little peek into our life of uh, having a child with Duchenne muscular dystrophy because today is World Duchenne Awareness Day. And awareness just means that we're just trying to make sure that those words mean something to somebody that you can go, oh, I understand what muscular dystrophy is. And uh, Duchenne, that's an interesting one, right? Well, there's like 40, 43, 40 something uh, um, different types of muscular dystrophy out there. And we've got friends with several different kinds, but the one that impacts our son is called Duchenne. And um, it also affects your body in ways that you might not think that is a muscle, but your heart is a muscle. So we worry about his heart function. Um, <clears throat> knock on wood, so far he's doing pretty well. Um, it also affects your lung uh, ability to function. Um, he has just now started in this past year during COVID using his BiPAP um, pretty much most of the day. Um, uh, not just at night now. And uh, um, it took him a long time before he even got to the point. He just started using the BiPAP and then um, he felt like it helps him breathe a little bit easier if he uses it. So, you know, again, when I talked about um, it's harder sometimes for us as the parents to know that our child now requires another piece of equipment just to survive. And, um, but, <clears throat> but knowing that and encouraging him to use it and not be afraid of it needs to outweigh my own feelings about these pieces of equipment, right? So, um, the fact that he's willing to wear it now and use it and ask for it means a lot to us. Um, now... Now we're into the point in his progression of this disease that, you know, some of his equipment requires electricity. So, you know what, when we get big hurricanes or um, <clears throat> any kind of tornadoes, whatever kind of um, uh, storm that might knock out our power, we need to You've got out, mail. Um, 
how we're going to um, uh, make sure his equipment works. So we have purchased, you know, a portable battery pack that's going to last uh, several hours for us. And uh, um, hey, Aunt Vicky, how are you? Just sharing information about AJ and uh, because it is World Duchenne Awareness Day. And so I just thought I'd share a little bit about our life uh, um, <clears throat> with uh, having AJ and Duchenne. And I'm talking about how, you know, he uses his BiPAP um, more. Um, and truthfully, because of, of the pandemic, we haven't gone out of the house. He doesn't, um, he doesn't want to leave the house uh, and be around others right now. Um, he's, he's always been a bit of a hermit, so it hasn't been... A too big of an adjustment for him to do this. Um, he goes, he, he, he wishes he had been in school uh, um, last year so he could say he was made for virtual learning. But unfortunately, he's too old and he had to do regular school his whole time. Um, but that that's another part of that journey that while he was in school, you know, he made some friends, uh, only only less than a handful, two or three uh, have actually kept in touch and actually have tried to visit. There's only a couple uh, that actually visit on a fairly regular basis with him. Um, he can't text on his phone anymore uh, as easily. So, you know, think about those kind of things that your child can do or you can do that he can't do. Um, what he uses for us uh, to get hold of me now that he can't text on his phone and reach for his phone. Um, hey, Miss Wendy. Um, he, he, we have one of the Alexa dots in his room and it has all his contacts in it and he can say call mom or call dad and it makes my phone ring and I, all I need to see is the caller ID that says his name and uh, we hang up he hangs it up we don't even talk um, I know he needs me and I go into his room you know so we've had to come up with other ways to communicate um, uh, when I'm not right there with him and we all know I don't hear super well so I'm not going to hear him calling for me. So that's why it's best if he um, rings my phone, you know, if I'm not in the room with him. Um, and that's how he um, calls us in the middle of the night. Um, um, he can no longer, he hasn't been able to roll himself over in bed for a couple of years now. So every night Jim is up, mostly Jim, I help too, but mostly Jim uh, helps move him three, four, five times a night sometimes. It just depends. It could vary. Some nights it's a, a fairly easy night and it's only two or three times that we're up. Um, uh, but that's also why we are great nappers and sometimes you'll see us sitting down and we doze off, you know, because we're not getting consecutive sleep. Uh, so, you know, Duchenne, um, is there's been a lot of good that has come out of it. I've made some great friendships, uh, me personally, with connecting through Facebook friends and family, um, my community, my Hartford County friends um, that I've gone to, worked with, um, uh, do volunteer in the PTA work with, and all of that are always so encouraging. Our family is so encouraging and supportive. Um, but to be able to connect with other families throughout our country, throughout the world, really, um, has been a special, unique opportunity that otherwise I would never have had. Um, uh, it's amazing how many of us are out there. Then there's the flip side of it, is that sometimes we feel, I will feel guilty This is the hard part to talk about. I will feel guilty that we still have AJ.
some days I can talk about this super easy and some days I can't. Um, but it is something that we have to face reality with. That um, our children are not going to have long, long, long lives. They're not going to make it till their 80s or 90s or to be on the Smucker's jam jar when you hit 100. It's just not going to happen. Um, but there's a little bit of that survivor guilt when you know you have friends that have already lost their kids, um, especially at younger ages, uh, um, in their teens and all of that, um, and you wonder, why is my kid still here then? Um, but on the other side, I want, I want to say we're so encouraged to know that some of our guys are living to be 30s, 40s, and 50 years old. Um, so it's not impossible that he's going to have, in, ter in Duchenne terms, a long life. Um, we're at 25. He'll be 26 in February. So, you know, um, but sometimes it's hard to see... Um, when we lose one of our, our, our friends, um, due to this disease and, um, but the positive is we're there to support each other and we will put our own fears and our own sadness aside to support someone else. And, uh, um, uh, knowing that. Um, there are people out there that know they are living with something called Duchenne muscular dystrophy and that um, at any point their heart could stop or they could have trouble breathing and all of that is hard. But I'll be honest, we don't think about that on a day-to-day -day basis. That is not who I am. That is not how I can be. Um, because otherwise I'd be a mess all the time. Um, and I'm very grateful to the families who have kids who have done the clinical trials out there to try and find a cure and everything like that. My son never wanted to be that way. Um, you know, uh, we all have different personalities, right? I'm miss positive. I'm miss outgoing. I will talk to you if you talk to me. Um, my son is not. He is Mr. Quiet. He is Mr. Shy. He's gotten much more talkative as he's gotten older into adulthood, but he is much more quiet. And um, we joke that he's Mr. Pessimistic. Um, you know, the car warranty uh, calls that we all get, those robo calls? Well, he feels like uh, he's told us that his warranty, he is about, he thinks about 15, 10 to 15 years left on his, his warranty. Um, so we use humor in our life. We use humor to get through all of the um, uh uh, challenges, the different milestones, um, whether they're a good milestone or a bad milestone. Um, we use humor around here, and it may not be the best humor for everybody, but um, uh, that's one of our coping skills to get through it. Um, I know, uh, and I freely admit, I use my volunteer work as my outlet, my PTA work. That's my time to... Um, not have to focus on, you know, uh, uh, Duchenne in front of us. Um, but um, I would not trade any of this in the world. And I am forever grateful that we have the kind of awareness that we do, but we can always have more. And that's why I decided to come forward and talk about it today. Um, I'm trying to get back into doing some of my chats and things like that, but today is an opportunity for me to share with you what Duchenne is, how it affects. I'm going to post um, uh, some more factual pictures about it um, and some old posts that I've done in previous years that I do love how Facebook shares that with me so I don't have to retype it all, but I didn't have the energy to type it all out today. Um, because sometimes my creativity is, is struggles with that. Um, but today I just felt like talking and I wanted to share that with you. And I wanted to share that um, you may not know it, but there may be somebody 
that you will come in contact who will have a child with Duchenne um, and if they're school age to encourage them to go sit next to them at lunchtime. That was a hard thing for us when he started using the wheelchair and he went to high school and the first six weeks of school he was not at a table that could even accommodate anybody else to sit with him and he was by himself with just his aide. You know, um, um, so for my teacher friends, for my um, inclusion helpers, my school administrators that I know out there, pay attention to all of your students. And if you know they have a physical disability, and if we're talking about inclusion and um, uh, diversity and, and all of that and equality and all of that make sure you're also looking at the kids with the physical disabilities and include them make sure that we're teaching these skills that may not be so inherent in others in how to encourage um, and and motivate and know when to help um, AJ is a very independent person and he doesn't want me helping all of the time and he gets mad at me for trying to help do something if I jump the gun and don't give him an opportunity to do it first you know um, so it's a fine line and his inclusion helpers Miss Sharon and uh, um, Mr. Neal they knew exactly how to encourage him how to um, motivate him but yet knew exactly when it was time to step in and help him without making it a big deal or embarrassing him or anything like that um, you know so uh, I'm thrilled that you all are uh, part of our tribe part of our family part of our circle um, whatever you want to call it our community um, um, we are everything. We are all of it, and sometimes we feel like we're none of it. Um, I'll be honest, you know, Jim and I can't usually go out together by ourselves anymore because AJ is at the stage now where we can't really leave him at home by himself. So that doesn't mean don't ask us to come out. It just means that if we say no, we can't attend um, as a couple um, that that's why. Or if we say, well, one of us can go because the other one's going to stay at home with AJ. It doesn't mean that that person staying home with AJ doesn't care about you and your event. It just means we have to take care of AJ. Um, his sisters are great and they do help out when we're in town, but you know, we're in Ocean Pines. I don't have, um, uh, readily available, uh, people to come hang out with him so we can go out, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I may be close to the beach, but I don't get to the beach very often. So, um, one day that will come about and that will happen. And, uh, um, you know, so today I'm just taking, I know I'm long winded and I can talk and talk and talk. Um, but I just want you to know what World Duchenne Awareness Day means and how it's important to our family and how it's important um, to everyone um, that knows us so that um, we're just trying to bring awareness and we want everybody to know that your cause is just as important as, as this cause, you know. Um, we're all struggling. We all have something in our lives that we need to climb through the rubble through, right? So this isn't to take away from anybody else or say we're more important than any, any other disease or cause out there. This is just to say, hey, did you know we exist? Did you know that there are kids out there who are struggling? Did you know that there are newly diagnosed families that are overwhelmed with all the information? Did you know that there are families out there that have lost their child? Did you know that there are family that has a child that has to use a ton of equipment now. Um, you know, so um, I won't take up too much of your time, but I will say if you ever have any questions, feel free to ask me. That is the best way we can help with awareness is to answer questions. And um, 
I only get emotional every once in a while. Most of the time, I am very matter of fact about it, and I don't mind talking about it. Um, AJ won't want to talk about it um, directly, necessarily, um, but we are grateful for all the organizations out there like the MDA um, and all our uh, longtime friends from the MDA. Um, there's Parent Muscular Dystrophy, Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, there's Cure Duchenne, um, there's the Jet Foundation. There's all sorts of uh, um, different groups out there. And you know why they're there? It's because they have someone important in their lives that are affected by Duchenne. And one day there will be a full cure or a full treatment plan. But until then, we're going to keep living day to day. And we're going to, we believe in quality um, for us, quality over quantity. Um, uh, so we're just trying to make the best of uh, AJ's life as we can and um, do our best. And we're not perfect and we have our rough days where we get mad at each other. Um, uh, you know, but, but um, we would rather have those arguments than not, right? So um, just keep in mind that there are kids out there that become grown adults with this disease. And um, in my mind, they're, you know, I will always view AJ as my kid, my child, but he is a grown up. He is a 25 year old man um, who's uncomfortable most days because of his back and everything. Um, and that's why he doesn't get in his wheelchair as much uh, anymore. But um, I'm going to post some pictures later um, about some visuals that might help you um, visualize the, the kind of issues that families at all the different stages might have. So if you see something, make a comment, put it in the comments here. If you have a question, you can put it here. I'm also going to upload this video to my YouTube channel. All you have to do is hunt for my name. I'm going to have a section of videos that will talk about this kind of stuff. Um, I will also do videos talking about chronic kidney disease, which yours truly has. And so I um, am trying uh, and I'm going to have some videos about my PTA volunteer work and stuff like that. So you can always find my YouTube channel by just typing in my name and uh, um, just take the time today to take a minute to say a positive thought, to say a prayer, um, uh, for those that live with Duchenne muscular dystrophy and uh, uh, know that um, we are always here. We will support you if you're if you know of someone or you you unfortunately end up joining our community um, as someone who has a, a, a child with Duchenne. Um, reach out to me. Uh, I will love to connect with you um, and help you um, and I know it can be overwhelming when you get so much information, um, but you know, on the bright side, AJ did graduate from high school. He already defied one of the odds when we were told when he was first diagnosed at age six that he might not make it to graduation, and he did. And so um, uh, he does not like me to take pictures of him. So my cover picture today is uh, uh, as one of the most recent ones I have of him uh, because he's holding his uh, best friend Chloe's daughter, Reef, and uh, um, she, uh, um, she's she been a good friend to him, and he enjoys uh, the visits with her. Um, uh, but most of the time, my pictures are of him turned away from me, so... Uh, um, I'm always so envious of all you f moms and dads out there who get these great, awesome pictures of your kids, no matter what their abilities. doesn't have to be a, a Duchenne kid. Any kid who actually smiles for their parent, <laughs> I have to beg, plead, and bribe. No. Um, uh, AJ is just a quiet kid. He does not want to be the poster child for any cause. Um, he will leave that up to me to do the talking, 
Um, so, but if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments, to reach out to me privately if you want. Um, but just know that I personally and Jim and the girls and AJ all appreciate your support and your encouragement. And if, if and when I do tell about a difficult day, you're always there to bring me up uh, um, and just know that I will always be there to encourage you and whatever your journey is throughout this lifetime. And um, I look forward to chatting with you again. I don't know exactly when, but um, I kind of like my little setup here. If you notice, I have my little beach Christmas tree. I got the regular tree. These trees stay up permanently at the beach house on the sunroom. This is mama's quiet space here. So um, uh, on that note, I'm going to let you go because I probably talked way too long. But like I said, um, I just wanted to share a little bit about our lives um, and uh, how it's a little bit different than it was several years ago for us. It's a bit more of a challenge. Um, but we're still doing it and we will keep doing it for however long, uh, God blesses us, uh, with this journey. So, um, uh, have a wonderful day to all the kids getting ready to start school tomorrow, uh, in Hartford County. Uh, good luck. Good luck to all my teacher friends. Um, uh, Worcester County, where we are, uh, they just went back today, so I'm sure my neighbor is enjoying the fact that he has a couple of hours of quiet time, too. So, um, but um, I might do a video later uh, on education and Duchenne um, and our experiences, but uh, until then, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for taking the time to watch some of it, all of it, or none of it. Um, but I'm just, uh, proud to be a part of this community, um, the, the Duchenne community of family and friends, um, has really made a big impact on, on my life and how we support one another. So, um, I will see you all later. Okay. Have a wonderful day and blessings to all of you. Thanks. Bye.